Okay, very pleased to welcome Steve Bannon and Ben Ari Levy. Steve, I'll, I'll begin with you if I may. Um, President Trump said at the United Nations last month, the future does not belong to the globalists. The globalism is the last of the great failed ideologies of the 20th century. September 18th, 2008, the Oval Office, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman, Secretary of Treasury goes to see President Bush three days after Lehman Brothers goes bankrupt in London. And they tell President uh, Bush, we need one trillion dollars by the end of the day, a cash infusion by the end of the day to save the American financial system and to save in the next week the global financial system. It was paid by working class and middle class people in the United States, in Europe, and in Asia. That is what globalism has brought us, deindustrialization, and a system of oligarchs as laid out in a book that we'll talk about, The Empire and the Five Kings, by my esteemed colleague. And it is, as Donald Trump said, populist nationalism that's going to see us forward. If America decides to renounce globalism, and if the other side, you have Turkey, China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Sunni Islam, who continues to be globalist, then we are, we, not you and me, the West, the democracy is losing. This speech of Trump about globalism today, it means the American president, administration, retreating from Kurdistan, betraying the Kurds, not holding its words, sending to carnage our best friends, those who protected us from barbarity of ISIS. It means America as a fortress losing any sort of credibility. Is the U.S. abandoning its allies and responsibility? It, it, it absolutely is not. In fact, uh, Bernard cannot be farther from the truth. We are an ally, an ally of NATO and individual countries in NATO, an ally of the Kurds, an ally of the Gulf Emirates, the littoral nations. I don't agree with what President Trump has done in this regard, but I can understand in his and what he's trying to do is hold together the NATO alliance. My question today when I look at America is where is the friendly, the former friendly America to the afflicted, to the despaired, to the victims of the world? The Turks this morning bombed a facility where you have some ISIS detainees, prisoners. What will happen? They will escape from the jail. They will disseminate all over the world. And they will come in the countries of the allies of America, if not to America itself. America is still there. What we're trying to do and what Trump is trying to do is say, only in an alliance of the West with, with our other partners and other allies like India and Japan, the littoral nations around the South China Sea. Only the, the, that. The only Japanese today are shivering of fear of what can happen to them after the diplomatic show of your president with Kim Jong un. Look, the, the, the situation in North Korea, in Afghanistan, in Venezuela, Donald Trump didn't create these. The great geniuses of globalization created that. Globalization is a failed, another failed ideology of the 20th century. If, if and, and populist nationalism is our way forward. But if I may, Steve, you posit nationalism as the answer to failed globalization. Concretely, let's take France. In Front National, in the Gilets Jaunes, what they're looking for is to get their country back and to stand with the united and proud France. Macron, who was supposed to be a reformer, what did he do? He put the entire burden, the entire burden of the Paris Accord, which is China cheating on global warming, he put the entire uh, uh, solution for that on the back of the people in France who could pay for it less. Populism and nationalism. For me, the real stake of today, and this is why I think you do a very dirty job in Europe, 
is that all these movements which you are trying to help, they are not so happy with it, by the way, as you know, but all these movements, they are weakening Europe. They are working against Europe values and Europe's interest. They are playing for Erdogan, for Xi Jinping, and for Putin. America has never been so indifferent at what the hell can happen to Europe. You have to speak when, in when fact. When you have to speak in Trump fact. In ben Pentagon, ben Pentagon, ben wait a minute, no, no, this is an important yeah. point for all of us. We yeah. are speaking under the, ban the banner of Athen Democracy Forum. Donald Trump has today some military advisors and some diplomats who tell him that he takes the risk to have a rush of jihadists in Europe and he does not give a shit about it. The jihadist of Kurdistan coming back, disseminating. Is this a good way to treat the ally? Is this a way to reinforce the alliance of NATO? Steve, this what is a say? joke. The alliance is stronger than it's been in decades because of the increased spending. We are putting more money into, into North Atlantic, into North, we are. That's just, that, that, the, the, these, are a, a, these are facts. An alliance is not only a question of money. It's a question of reliability. It is a question of ideas. It's a question of values. This is what an alliance is about. You do not see, even with this book, what's sitting right in front of you. It is not five kings, it is China and tributary states against the West. And if we don't, in our wisdom, over time, pull off into our alliance Russia and reunite Russia with the Judeo-Christian West, we are not going to win this war. Steve, the Judeo-Christian West, what about all the other people who live in the West? Well, no, the, 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 look, that's the great thing about the Judeo-Christian West. The Judeo-Christian West has always been very open. It's been always been very open. How do you think we have such no, a vibrant... No, not, all, not always open to the Jews. Putin says it openly and more and more openly. He is the adversary of Europe as it is. He has a strategic project, which is the Eurasian project, which is methodically opposed to the European project. This is the reality of today. He, he, and when Donald is, Trump, when you president, which you are so eager to please today, says that this Putin deserves a triple A, what can I tell you? We, pro-American friends in Europe, are despaired of this new face of America. America is more committed to a Europe of nations than it's ever been. And that Europe of nations is going to be stronger than ever. Not, not a weak NATO and not some centralized bureaucracy in Brussels that tells people what to do, but individual nations governed by their own people in a democracy as handed down from Jerusalem and Athens and Rome that can govern themselves. And this is what free men and women are, this is what the Westphalian system is, and that's what we support. You support the breaking of that system. See, once at the impeachment inquiry, where's that headed? I think the impeachment inquiry is a mortal threat to Donald Trump's presidency. You should be opposed to this. This is the nullification project that started from the very moment we had to come from behind when. And the popular vote, ma'am, is not how we uh, elect presidents of the United States. If it was, ma'am, if it was, ma'am, we would have won the popular vote, but thank you. Right. Would you like to see President Trump impeached, Let, viewed from France? My dear Roger, I would, I would not say that I am happy if America was burning. And I, I, I need to say that I would, not, I would be very uncomfortable if the president of America was impeached. You said uh, that you are in favor of Europe of singular nations. But in this world which you pretend to know, what you have in front of you, a Turkey which, which goes back to the Ottoman dream of empire. When you have in front of you a Putin who has a dream and a will of empire. When you have in front of you huge China. When you have in front of you Iran, which is back to the Persian imperial dream. 
How can you resist <laughs> like little village you resist, or like little uh, cities of Greece you one resort, by one you, and one knows you re, you resist in the exact exact history you resist, that it, you this resist. is a real tipping point when the great civilization no, no. fails. Not no, not through not through an anti democratic operation like the EU. You you succeed the same way you succeeded in World War One and World War Two by a united group of nations, nation states. Europe will be stronger as a Europe of nations, not a United States of Europe. This populist nationalist movement's not going away. And it does believe in democracy. It does believe in democracy because you guys only started having, having concerns about democracy when you started losing elections. No, of course. So the, the real situation of today is that you have uh, some leaders who use democracy in order to torpedo democracy. Trump won the election also by undemocratic means. Don't forget yes, Cambridge un, Analytica. Un, un, Don't un, forget un, the little Putin un, push un, of, un, uh, of un, elbow. Unbelievable. Don't forget it, all the pressures from that. So this is the situation we have to confront. But what I can tell you, what, let me finish. As I want, no, let me on. finish, please. Have the courtesy of let me finish. You're supposed to be let about me, facts, sir. Uh, let, you're, you're supposed to be about facts. It was 100,000 Facebook ads, okay? It was nothing. The reason you lost is Hillary Clinton did not go and make her case to working class Democrats in Michigan and Wisconsin. Your fable, you still had it stolen from you. You lost and you were beaten. Part of democracy is accepting when you get your ass kicked, okay? You are right. At this moment, the populists are on the rise. On the rise. They are putting some points, but I believe that they will lose and that democracy at the end, not so long, will prevail. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you both very much.